Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist. And today we are painting a beautiful horse. This is one of my most favorite paintings. I'm gonna show you the master, and this is my inspiration. Uh, so this is a painting that I do with all of my shows, my live shows. And she's beautiful. So she has a flower. This is, you know, they kind of refer to this a lot as that um, boho look. So she's got that fun look going on and the wonderful feathers and flowers. We've got some clouds in the sky. And anyway, she's just stunning. So she's one of my favorites and we're gonna learn how to paint her today. So this is how it will work for our class today. We are working on a smaller canvas so that you're not here with me for like three hours. That helps a little bit. Also, this template prints on your computer, makes it really easy. So I'm, if I print it out on cardstock, I can easily cut this very simple shape out. And then on my website, I have this available for you. So this prints out any standard. You can do it on copy paper if that's all you got. That will totally work. And then you can just cut it out and then place it on your canvas and then trace around it. And um, I always use a beautiful little Sharpie to do the tracing work. And there is just a teeny amount that is, you can do it pre-handed or I also have templates for um, the feathers. And I think I've got some roses on there. I'm not really sure. I'll need to remedy that if I don't, but I for sure have feathers. I have a lot of different feathers on there. And so the only thing that's free-handed will be this little kind of organic line that comes through here, the markings on the nose, which is definitely optional. You can have, you know, just a, a pure brown horse if you want, or black horse, or you can even do a gray horse. You can do whatever color you want. So you don't actually need that um, different coloring coming down the front, but I'm gonna go ahead and have that here. And then this is freehand of the nose, that, the, the nostril that comes up. And so how I want you to imagine that is you can practice a little bit. Of course, I would do this with a pencil too. That way it gives you the freedom and flexibility to kind of work it out and be happy with it uh, before you get started. But basically, it is a lot like making a little upside down teardrop. So you just, you can practice that a little bit, but do that there, that upside down teardrop or that raindrop look. That's what we have going on there for the nostril. All right, and then little roses. So let's talk about that too. All right, so freehanding on the roses, quite honestly at this point, since we're gonna paint all over it anyway, it's really just like making little lumpy circles. I did add a few more details just so you would definitely have a strong visual of yes, that's going to be a rose, but I'm actually gonna paint all over all that so it won't even really matter. Um, so I've, I'm gonna just go ahead and make these little lumpy circles. That will be the start of my roses. And then I'll, I can have little leaves that come out. All right, so those are really fun, but that's all we're gonna do right there. And then of course I have the feathers on my website too, if you wanna go ahead and uh, you know just download those, you can trace those off. Everything is at tipsyartist.com. Um, I think it's tipsyartist.com slash templates. Um, if not, you can definitely go to tipsyartist.com. You'll see templates in the main menu. And so that'll help you out with finding all of that beautiful information. And I, ha I also have a um, description with supplies and everything down below, so you can check all that out too. So it gives all the extra details there for you. So we do have brushes to get started, our little family here, the family group. All right, so I have Big Daddy, all right, and then Mama, and then I have Little Buddy, and then Little Bit. All right, so that's my little family of brushes. I've got my paint all ready to go. I also have lots of extra paint nearby so that if I need to reload a little bit, I can. Um, I have, um, I call these like bar mops or rags, paper towels work great too. I also have a nice bucket of water nearby because we have to give our brushes a bath. All right, and um, I think that's just about it. I've got, uh, you can do, you know, water to help you uh, kind of hydrate through the experience, or of course wine to help you relax. So those are all options as well. All right, so to get started, we're all going to start with Big Daddy. All right, here's, so here's our Big Daddy brush, and we're all gonna start with our background first. 
And so we're gonna do a little bit of our mixing here. So I've got a plain plate here for mixing. All right, so here we go. Big Daddy brush, mixing plate. We're gonna start by mixing up a little bit of our turquoise. All right, so I'm gonna take Big Daddy and I'm going to pick up a nice big dollop of the blue and then a nice big dollop of the green and then a nice big dollop of the white. All right, so we've got blue, green, and white. Blue, green, and white. I'm going to mix all of those together. This will give us a really pretty turquoise color. So that is beautiful. And again, blue, green, and white, just about equal parts on that. And so that gets us to where we wanna go. And then I also like to make sure I just have a lot of just pure white nearby on the side. So there's my pure white nearby on the side. Now, when I start to place all this color into the background, I make sure I've got a, a nice layer of paint on my brush. And sometimes I'm really careful to make sure I don't have um, any excess additional pure colors that are still in the mix. In this particular case, I'm not too worried about it because even if a little bit of that pure cobalt touches into the sky, I actually think that's going to be pretty nice. So I'm gonna be pretty relaxed about um, not washing the brush at this point. I'm gonna leave all, those, leave all those colors just loaded up, ready to go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start to paint those on in what looks like a little crosshatch stroke. So it feels like we're making the letter X over and over and over again. Again, just a letter X over and over and over again there. Now, the other thing that I'll do is as I'm working this in, I also wanna make sure that I give um, a little bit of variety in the sky. So I'm gonna touch into some of that pure white now and push that back and forth, just like I'm making that same letter X feeling. And then watch your brush handle. You wanna make sure at this stage, it's out to the side. All right, this will give you a nice light hand. It's a little bit of an awkward hold to hold it this way, but that actually works in your favor because it allows you to have a more gentle hand. So you're not applying a lot of weight on the canvas, it gives you a light touch and it allows a lot more of that paint to just rest right on the surface. So I'm gonna keep working this in. Again, that letter X. So again, it's just lots of repetition. And then don't forget to keep touching into that white. And if you do like some of those darker, more dramatic colors, you can do that too. So you can actually go back to your palette here we we'll touch into a little bit of this just pure cobalt blue. And see, that's pretty dramatic. And I can kind of push that back and forth. Now you wanna make sure and do that while the paint is still really wet. You want that wet to wet mix happening there. That's what makes it so beautiful. And just keep working that in. So you can be very free with this, spend a lot of time with it. This also really helps you relax when you're working into those larger areas here. Now, when you start to get near the edges, you're gonna to have to slow down a little bit and be a little bit more cautious about how you hold the brush and how we do our cut-in work. So I'm gonna continue being just very liberal and free with the brush at this point as I'm working into those larger areas. But when we do get close to the edge, I'm gonna have to do cutting work. So then what I do is, I wanna make sure I kind of get a, a middle, middle ground. So that would be definitely anything in here. I don't wanna go too light or too dark. I wanna stay right here in the middle. And then I wanna hold that brush just like you would hold a pencil. So this gives you a lot more control. It also dramatically changes the brush stroke. So you're seeing big brush strokes here, lots of coverage. You hold the brush like a pencil, watch this. It goes into a very thin line, very thin line. So that's what you need to go ahead and get right next to that edge to help you have a lot more control when you're working into that space. And for the most part, if it's a long line, you can most definitely just stay with the same large brush and work in and around this whole shape. 
Now some of these areas might become a little bit small. I was actually able to get right up in there. But on some of these areas that get kind of tiny in throughout here, you can certainly uh, switch over to, like your little buddy brush is a great tool because it's still a flat, all right? So it loads up the same way. See nice thin line edge there. And then you can take this, hold it like a pencil, and you've got that smaller brush to kind of work into the really tiny areas here. So that works really well. And then watch my pinky here a little bit here too. I use my pinky, it, my pinky is like a kickstand on a bike. So it just helps steady my hand. And that helps me do a lot of um, these more precise moves into the smaller areas by just holding it right here. And that works really well, especially when there's nothing else in the space. The only time you have to be careful with your little tiny pinky kickstand is if you've already got painted surfaces and you kind of have to be careful where you're sticking it and you don't want to mess up something. So, you know, exercise a little caution there. But for right now, we're all good. And I can rest my little pinky right here. And this really helps give me, when necessary, help stabilize my hand so that I can move my other fingers and get in there and do some of those more precise moves in there. So still working on tiny moves in here. And again, this is what I call little buddy. He's definitely a great little friend. Great tool, wonderful tool here. Still working in with that medium shape into those small areas. Wonderful. Okay, so now I've done all the cut-in work with, that I need with the smaller brush, so I'm going to continue back with my Big Daddy brush. This is a long line, so I can go ahead and work into this, that area there. And then now I can kind of relax a little bit, switch back to that textural feel of working the brush back and forth. And back and forth. Don't forget about your white over here. Keep remembering to alternate back in, push in a little bit of white every now and again. All right, so that's gonna be first coat. Now I'm, I'm noticing some areas in here that are still appearing to be a little bit choppy. And I need to kind of get a, a more, um, just a smoother look, a little bit more blending. So I'm gonna come back in with a little bit more white. And I still have enough turquoise mixed up on my plate here. So then I'm just going to, and this is actually a really fun part of the process. I'm gonna just come back in with more of that really light-handed back and forth cloth strip that I work in over the surface here. So just back and forth, back and forth. And I can get really close to those edges with this pattern of going back and forth here. And you almost want to make your hand just about as light as you can and just barely skim the top of the surface. And do it multiple times, just barely touch it. Just work it back and forth. 
And you get some really nice effects in there as you do this. See, I'm seeing a little bit of canvas peekaboo right there, so I want to come back over that with a little bit more of my turquoise. And I can touch into a little bit of that white and just continue to work in that in. And don't let the white scare you when you first place it down. It might be a little bit too abrupt and contrasting at first. Uh, just remember to you know come back in with a little bit more of that soft turquoise to help blend it all into the background. And just keep working it back and forth. Because this sky could even be something that, in a relaxed state, you could rework several times if you wanted to. Right now, it's still very wet, so I'm able to kind of get it all in, in one take here. So I'm not really running into any dry brushing just yet, which is nice. But if it does happen that your paint starts to set up, and you do have some of that dry brush look happening, um, you can always just come back in and just rework the whole thing too, especially at this stage. And then take the flat side of the brush, just try to get right next to the edge. Just a light kiss of paint right near the edge there. And then just lightly work that back in. And you can do the edges later if you'd like. That way you can just hang it on the wall just as it is without a frame. Okay, so I think we're looking pretty good here. There's our lovely background. Uh, now I'm going to work uh, into the inside of the course. All right, so what we're going to have now is some brown and a little bit of red and actually some black. So we're going to have lots of fun colors here. I still want to use Big Daddy for this stage. So another Big Daddy brush or if you want to go ahead and if you're kind of limited, you just have one, you need to wash out and get started again. Let's talk about that a little bit too. So this is the Big Daddy that I was using. So I can actually give him a nice spin in the water here. Nice spin, round and round and round and round. Apply a little bit of firm pressure. That will help release the paint. And then I'm going to have to wipe him down a few times because I'm getting this issue here with a lot of excess paint there so I'm going to wipe them off and then go back in one more time do a little tap 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 and then dry off really well. Now it's really important that you dry off the brush really well before you go back into your painting process again uh, because if you do have a lot of excess water on your brush and you go back and apply pressure on your canvas which of course you'll have to do so if that happens, it creates what looks like a, almost like a mascara run coming down your canvas. So the best way to prevent that is always just make sure that you dry off your brush really well after washing it every time. Also make sure you get that handle too. You don't want any of those water runs to come off the handle too. All right, now let's get a nice little mix going here. I wanna make sure I've got lots of brown. That's gonna be a great start. I'm also going to add a little bit of some black in with our brown. Just a tiny amount, that'll help darken it up a little bit. Make it uh, to where it's more of a dark teak color. And the other nice thing is that it helps it cover better on the canvas too. Makes it, gives it a little bit more weight. All right, so I've got a little bit of that black mixed in with the brown. And then um, I also like to have a little bit of red nearby. So we've got our brown and our black and our red. So I'm going to start painting into this background here. And the painting technique is very similar to what we just did in the sky. 
So I'm going to load up first with the dark shades first. I'm going to come in with my brown and my black. And I'm going to start to do that really lovely crosshatch effect there where I just make what looks like the letter X over and over and over again. All right, now I'm going to touch into a little bit of red. Push that in. Right, that's looking really sweet. I like that. And then I have to do a little bit of cut-in work, so I'm going to change how I hold that brush. I'm going to go in with more of that medium shade, that darker brown and black. Do my cut-in work here. Once I've got that, then I can start to pull out from the side using the flat side of the brush. All right, so we've got some tiny areas happening in here, so we want to use a smaller brush to work into those. In fact, those are so tiny, I'm actually going to use my little bit brush. So here's a little bit, smallest brush we've got. All right, I'm gonna load it up by doing a little twist here. So I'm gonna take the brush, twist it into the paint. That loads it up, but see it also kind of twists it into a nice fine point. So nice fine point there. Then I can go ahead and place this color in the middle here. In between these two lovely little feathers. Just keep working this around here. Now I'm going to end up doing something a little bit interesting around the eye. So I'm going to hold off a little bit before I get too close into this area because I have some tricky blending work to do. But I've got that done. I'm going to go ahead and finish out this side here. This is my brown and black here. Continue working this in. So I've got my cutting work done on this side. Then I'm going to make sure and do a last go around here with that back and forth. That cross cut. Add that very pretty texture right over the top. So now we're getting into this area here where we're going to start to do more brown in and around this face here. But it starts to get a little bit tricky around the eye because the eye is so dark and I want to make sure that I have some really pretty, I'm going to do some really nice turquoise details around the eye which is really sweet. So I'm going to be working that in. I'm going to get the big broad strokes done here as much as I can with a large brush. But it is just about time for me to have to say goodbye to Big Daddy. I've got to switch over to a smaller brush here. I can start to work with my little buddy. Let's get him. All right, so little buddy. And I've loaded up with that brown and black.
And I'm gonna go ahead and wet the canvas with this darker color. But as you can see, I, I don't wanna lose my eye here, so I'm gonna come in with a little bit of a hint of that turquoise from the sky. But I'm gonna come with a light brown first. I don't know if you can see what I did there, but as you start to push on the canvas a little bit with the brush, you can actually scrape away a little bit of that paint. And I went ahead and did that to my advantage so I could still kind of pull that paint away a little bit, get a thinner coat, and it kind of scraped a lot of it off actually, but I needed to be able to see that eye again. So I pulled away some of that color. Go ahead and just finish this out here. This is all the brown that's going to that's going to come in on the face. Now I want to eliminate those brush strokes a little bit, so I'm going to take little buddy, load him up with a little bit more paint, and come back in, and do that same textural X stroke like I'm making the letter X over and over and over again. A lot of repetition here, light hand over the top, and this will help kind of feather out those brush strokes a little bit. Adds more paint to the canvas and eliminates those brush stroke lines that you were seeing before. Now, I need to come back in with that lovely turquoise that I was talking to you about earlier. And let's see. Here we go. So I've got my little bit brush. And let's find the turquoise that we had from the uh, sky that we had earlier. All right, so here's a little bit, and here's my turquoise. And so I'm going to take my little bit here, and I'm going to make a thin little line all the way around the eye here. And when you do this, if you are a little bit heavy handed at first and you just put a big, it looks like you just did a big line of scary blue eyeshadow or something underneath your horse's eye, don't worry. Uh, you can come back in and, and sort of lightly work into it while it's still wet, so it'll be fine. Uh, so what you wanna do now is I'm gonna come back in with another little bit brush, or you can wash that one you have and reload with a little bit of brown. It'd be a bit more ideal to have more than one little bit so you could almost kind of work back and forth here. But I'm going to come back in with another little bit, and I'm going to softly work in over the top now of that turquoise. Just soft brush. And then, remember, this is also a lot like our, our side move here. We take the side of the brush and work it in over the top. This gives you that nice light hand, allows a lot more coverage over the surface. So, and the best way to have that happen is it's that parallel to the canvas. So watch your handle. So if your handle's coming out towards you, it's, it's, give, it's giving you a heavy hand and it's digging into the paint. And that paint's coming off just about as soon as you put it on. So watch your handle. If it's parallel to the canvas, that gives you that light, gentle hand. And that really helps you work that onto that space. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back in with one more little line here of the turquoise. I'm going to be a bit more dramatic about it again, pushing it back onto the surface here. Because I'm going to work right back into it. Right, so that's pretty dramatic at this point. I don't want it to be quite that dramatic. It almost looks like he's been punched. We don't like that. No, no. All right, so I'm going to come right back into it and do a soft blend. Soft blend right into that. So now it just looks like this beautiful, delicate little highlight of that turquoise just around the eye and it makes that eye really stand out beautifully.
And then I might want a little bit of a highlight at the top too. So, but I'm gonna go with a different color this time. So I'm gonna go with, let's see, some gold and some white, gold and white. And you may have noticed, I still had all that brown on my brush. I didn't even wash it off, but I'm gonna be kind of softly working into what's already brown, so it's okay. Um, so I have a little bit of gold, a little bit of white. See, it makes that color right in there, kind of a muddy color. But this is actually going to serve as a nice little highlight here over the top of the eye. So I just do one thin little line above the eye. So we want that eye to be accentuated. So it's going, it's going to feel a lot like when you put on makeup in the morning and you are painting on that eyeliner. So that's the basic motion of it. And I'm gonna push back into that brown just a teeny amount and then kind of softly work back into that. pretty. I love it. Okay, so now we have a little bit of this. We can, there's a way you can cheat and there's a way you can still paint. Um, if you want to leave this white, very crisp white, um, your canvas is painted in primed white, so you could do that if you wanted to. I am going to go ahead and paint a soft, um, such a light gray that it almost appears like a light white, but I'm going to go ahead and paint that into mine. So I'm going to be coming back in with my little buddy here. All right, so here's little buddy. And, ooh, I don't like that. Hmm. A bunch of weird brushes. Okay, here we go. Little buddy, and here's some white. Now, I'm actually going to make this kind of a light, light, light taupe. So I want a teeny amount of the gold. That's going to push that to a light, creamy color. So that's right there. And do a little bit more white there. And then I want a super light, kind of like a gray. So I'm going to do a tiny touch into the black. Push that in. So there that is. All right, that's really nice. I, again, I want it to be extremely light. In fact, it's almost looking like the same color of the plate, but it really, in fact, has a little bit of gold and a little bit of the black in there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint into this area here. And again, this is my little buddy brush. And this color was made with a lot of white and a little bit of that gold and then a teeny, teeny amount of black. So you just barely touch into the black on that. All right, a um, little bit brush. So I'm going to rotate the head of the brush into the paint here. And I'm going to start to paint around these little shapes. So I've got some really tiny areas in here. And this gets really tiny in here. So just hold that brush like a pencil and work around those little shapes in there. And then if you do have to rework the edge at all, if you happen to have a little bit of overlap, remember you can always come back in with your little bit brush and let me show you. You can always come back in with a little bit of that brown 
and then you know come back in and kind of rework that edge a little bit if, if needed. And especially while the white is still a little bit wet, you can get a nice soft wet to wet paint blend in there too, which can also be a really nice effect. And then I better not forget my ears. I almost forgot my ears. All right, so I'm going to come back in with my darker colors here with the uh, brown and the black. I might need to reload a bit. And I'm going to be using my little bit brush here. So this is brown and black here. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint in my little ears here. And remember that little trick. Pinky is a kickstand. All right, and then one more. a little bit of base work done on the um, feathers. So I think I want to do some uh, light, I'll do over there, I did a light cream. All right, so I've got mostly white. In fact, I'm gonna use the same color that I used for the bridge of the nose here. Let's use that same one. Little bit brush, and then I'm just going to do a light coat of paint into the feathers. You kind of lightly feather that stroke out. When you get near the edge here, up here at the top, you can kind of lightly flick the edge of the brush out. Right, and now feather number two here. Feathering out to the side. Really sweet. So that's our base. We will come back in later uh, for some more pattern work over the top, but that's going to be a great foundation there. All right, now let's talk about our roses, our beautiful roses. All right, so we need to go ahead and finish those out with solid background color. So I am going to do some, uh, let's do some light pink to start with. So I'm gonna take a dollop of the white here and I'm gonna add it into the red. Okay, so I've got some really pretty, whoops, there we go, light pink. Right. Actually, I more, more white than that. Hmm. Let's try that. Hold on. Okay. Hmm. All right, so the more white. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just paint into these shapes. And remember I said earlier that they're gonna just start to look like little lumpy circles of color, and so that is definitely what's happening right now. So don't let this scare you, because you might, some people paint over all that detail, and that's okay, and then they're left with these, almost what seemingly, seemingly looks like just big blobs of color, but that's okay. This is a beautiful stage. We're trying to get the base work done, and this is exactly where we wanna be. We just want lots of color in that background. So there we go. I just put paint in my elbow. All right. 
I'm good. Usually covered in it. All right. So now let's do leaves. All right. So I've got some green handy, and I've got my little bit brush. This is what we'll be using, smallest brush. And I want to add, I'll take a little bit of green here, a little bit of white. And it kind of depends on which direction you want to go with this green. So you can warm it up a little bit if you want, add a little bit of gold to it. Um, if you want to cool it off to more of a sage color, you can add, be very sparing, but you can do a teeny amount of black. That's a nice look. Again, more of a sage feel to that. All right, so in my, uh, as I was mixing, my bristles got kind of um, full. So I want to kind of spin them back down there to a smaller size. Give me a tinier point to work with. And then I'm going to just hold my brush just like you'd hold a pencil. And then I'm going to do what looks like a parenthesis, and then another parenthesis. All right, parenthesis, and then another parenthesis. And those two connect and they form what looks like a little leaf. Let's do that again, parentheses, parentheses. And again. All right, so we have all those cute little leaves there. All right, now we are going to do the pattern work over the top of the rows. Hey, Bear just came in. All right. And I want some white over the top. So with all my roses, I always start with two different layers. So the first layer, and it really doesn't even matter what color you chose, like if you did um, darker purple or darker cream or a different color, um, you could come back in with white over the top. So I'm gonna use my little bit brush here and just pure white. And I'm going to make what looks like, again, I just love the parentheses. I don't know if this works. So look, parentheses, or you can think of it as a half circle or a little swish, you know, whatever connects with your brain to make you go, oh, what are those? Oh, that's easy, okay. So what we do the parentheses every single day. So that's a really easy thing to think about. So again, just make that come around Swish, 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 or parentheses, 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 however. And you want to keep coming around in a circle and working towards the inside of the rows. Let's do that again, all the way around here. Now, that is honestly just so lovely, you could just leave it like that if you wanted to. However, if you would like a bit more detail on here, I'm gonna show you the next step. All right, so I've got a clean little bit brush again, and then I'm going to come back in with a little bit of red. So I'm gonna take my red, and I'm going to just do one little spot, boom, right there in the center. Right there, and then right there. And then what I can do now is I'm gonna just do the same little stroke all around, just a few times, not a whole lot, just a little bit, but while the paint is still wet, and you've got a nice little soft blend back into that white paint that's already wet, just kind of lightly take that red and do the very same stroke and just kind of lightly place it around a few times. And then over here, just be real light-handed and just do a few more of those. And again, the, the pattern's exactly the same, where it feels like you're making what looks like that little 
you know, parentheses, parentheses, or little half circles, or swish, 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 and just keep working it into that circular pattern. All right, so our roses are beautifully done now. Uh, now I'm going to do the feathers. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna do just a light little stripe across the edge and then all through the center. So I'm gonna start with my little bit here and some brown paint. And again, we're just gonna do light stripes. Just, these are really just pretty loose. But just little stripes. I love this because they're just so easy. All right, so it's quite lovely, just little stripes. Now the same thing. And even if, you don't want these to be perfect stripes because they're never perfect on a feather. A real feather, they're gonna be, you know, they're just gonna have little rough edges and be a little bit misshapen. So again, you can really relax with this and just lightly take your brush all the way across. And if they have a little bit of a wave to them, that's actually a good thing. All right, so that's our first step. The next thing that we're gonna do that will really make this pop again and make it pull back out like a feather on the front will be the outline and the center line is really what makes it come forward again like a feather. So I'm going to take my little bit brush and some black paint here. I'm gonna slightly twirl into the paint. So lightly twirl it into a nice fine point, just like that. And then I'm going to do my center line. I mean, you can use your pink if you want, but this is where I kind of have to be careful and watch where I'm sticking my pan so I don't want to mess up work that I've already done. So that light line right through the center. And then I'm going to lightly go back around the edges here and do little diagonal lines around the outside. And light feathering out here to the side and then light diagonals coming in on the side here like that. So again, light feathers up here at the top, like little flicks out to the outside. And then light little diagonal lines here on the side. Yay, it's looking really good. All right, let's see, what would be next here? Oh, we need little bits of hair that can come down, the mane, the mane that comes down. Okay, so let's do some of that. All right, this time I'm going to use my mama brush. And I'm actually going to come in for starters with a little bit of my gold here. And then I wanna make sure that nearby I've got uh, some of the brown to maybe work back in. And I might even touch into a little bit of turquoise too, so we can really have fun with this. So here's Mama, all right? And I'm gonna push into a little bit of this gold paint here. And maybe just a touch of white with that. Softens it a little bit. And then I'm going to start at the top of the head and then just pull down and stroke, almost pretend like you're brushing the hair of the horse and take your hand in that same motion. And so come down and then lift off with a light hand. And I have to keep reloading a little bit. I, you can see I'm kind of pushing into a little bit of this wet paint, which is okay. But keep kind of following the line of the back a little bit, just a little stretch there and then come down and then lift off with a light hand. And you just want to keep repeating this same motion until you take it off the back here, just all the way off the back. A little bit of white and gold. a 
little bit more of that vibrant bright gold now. Some of that turquoise for fun. All right, so make sure I get my excess water out of my brush, and then let's do some of that turquoise. Just a few little highlights here. This is going to be pretty subtle. I don't want a whole lot of this. But just a little bit. And then I'm, I just buy a little purple over here. I might even just do a little bit of that. A little bit of white for some lavender. That's kind of nice. Okay, they're pretty. And then finishing up just a little bit more gold. Because with each stroke, it kind of took away some of that gold, so I'm going to follow back up with a little bit more of that dramatic gold coming in over the top. And I want that to be the predominant color. I'm loving that. Sweet. All right, um, I'm also going to teach you a few, there's a few little simple flowering tricks that you can do that people really enjoy, and they always create really beautiful effects. So let's do some of this with a little bit of purple and a little bit of white and my little buddy brush here. I'm going to dip into that real quick here. And I've loaded up my brush, and then I'm going to just do a quick little pounce here on the side of the brush. And just kind of pounce it out into a tiny little point here. And then I'm going to come out with a little bit more of this dramatic purple over the top. And then pounce in a little bit of water. So it just makes a fun little textural flower over the top. And I did this with just a two-step color process of just purple and white right over the top. And then I can do, you know, maybe some tiny ones over here. Start small and then just do tiny little dots out to the surface there. So I'm just kind of barely tapping on the side. Now another fun technique that you can do too will be little dots that you can place into the design. And I actually use the handle for this. So I can use the handle of the brush and then I'm gonna use some white paint. So I'm gonna just push into the paint just like this. And then I'll just press straight forward. And then I can push these down into little clusters 
and so it's just a fun way to make a little cluster of flowers that sort of pop in and out of the design. So nice little touches there. And you can just really go nuts with this if you want and add a whole bunch of these. And there's a lot of fun in there. And it's just really easy and very therapeutic. You can just dot, dot, dot. Make all kinds of fun things. And if you even like to just to be creative and do a little polka dot pattern on your horse somewhere, you could absolutely do some of that too. All right, let's see what else. Let's do a um, few little details on the leaves. So I'm going to come back in with kind of a darker charcoal gray. So I'm do a little bit of white here with the black. I'm going to take my little bit brush and get just about as tiny as I can get. So a quick little twist there. And then I like to do just a tiny little outline around those leaves. Because especially up against that sky, they will become a little bit lost. So this little outline really helps. Another thought is to add maybe a little bit of cobalt blue in there in the mix too. That also makes for a really pretty outline. Noticing my little trick with the kickstand, I didn't want to stick my finger right into the mane, so be careful. You start doing that. This is a precision move. I can use my pinky, but you have to watch. Make sure you put it in a dry spot if you want to use that method. So light little outlines around all these little leaves. And then we can do a few little, I'm going to mix just a little bit with the white. And I can make a few little swishes. Kind of an optional thing if you like to look at it. Very nice. And then we're going to do some clouds. All right, so very fun on the clouds here. I'm going to get a bigger brush. Let's go back to Big Daddy. So I'm going to rinse it off pretty well, dry it off. Then I'm going to come back in with some more white here. Push into that back and forth. And then I'm going to push the brush in a circle. And just keep pushing those circles. Pushing those circles. Then kind of lightly take your brush handle and just feather it out over the top. Okay. And then let's do another smaller cloud up here, but again, just push it in those big circles. And then finish out by Kind of taking the brush, turning it over to the side, and then just kind of doing a light little feathering over the top. All right, so that is lovely. Then I want to do some little highlights over the tops of the clouds here. So then I am going to use my little bit brush here, and I want to do, let's do some red. So a little touch of red. And I'm just going to do a tiny little line over the top. It's a little highlight. And you can always come back in and kind of softly blend that back in too. 
because you don't want to really start contrasting line as a highlight. You want to make sure it's kind of feathered in. So I'm going to come back in with my little bit brush here and just lightly feather that in, just a tad, so that it's all softly blended. Right, and the same thing here. Start with that little bit of red, and then you might even want to do a different color. So for example, we can go with a little bit of gold, see how that looks. That's a nice highlight too. And then let's do a nice soft blend back into that. And remember to get that brush just about as far over to the side as you can. Remember that feels kind of awkward, but that gives you that light, gentle hand over the top. It doesn't dig into the paint. Lightly feather that in. Very nice. Okay. And then if you want, you can do a little bit of some, on my model I have some green leaves that kind of peek out from the bottom here. So I'm going to actually come back in little bit brush and some really dark, beautiful teal. So I'm, just, I'm gonna do pure blue, pure green here, my cobalt blue, my emerald green, just mix those two together. Keep it really pretty dark, just a touch of white now, teeny amount of white. And then I'm going to start from the base Remember this line? Parentheses. <laughs> Same thing. Keeps that real simple. And then you can just go ahead and fill that in. That's going to be your first starting place. And then you can add some nice highlights to this. So you can come back in with maybe a little bit of this um, cobalt blue, just pure cobalt blue. Do a nice little outline. Lightly outline that. Same thing here. And here. Nice, okay. And then let's do a little bit of some, I don't know, maybe purple. This lavender this kind of nice. A little accents of that too. Lovely. We could actually probably call it a day. I do have little flowers added on this other one. Let's do a few little flowers for fun. That'd be kind of fun. Um, let's see. Let's do my little bit brush again. And then let's do some gold and white here. Let's mix those up. And then maybe a pop of lemon yellow here. Hold on a sec. Let's try some of this. So, lemon yellow. Just a hint here of that. 
Yeah, see that, that's lovely. That kind of makes it pop more like a sunflower here. All right, so I'm going to take my little bit brush and I'm going to just kind of lay it down here on the side like that. Just let the brush do the work for me. Just do a soft little impression there. All right, that's as simple as it is, quite honestly. Just leave it just like that. And then I'm going to follow up with my little trick where I do the dot with the white. So this is Big Daddy. And I, take, I use the handle and I dip into the white paint. And then I just push right down here in the center. See that fun? That's awesome. And then you can do little polka dots if you want. So there's there's all kinds of fun things that you can do. You can continue to make more little flowers on here if you want. Maybe a pink one. All right, let's do a little bit of red, a little bit of white. Uh, let's see what See how the brush do the work? Just kind of lay it down just like that and then touch on the side and top and then out to that side again. And then we're going to finish up with our big daddy and our white little dot right here in the center. All right, so that is looking awesome. I love it. All right, and then of course there is the optional lettering if you want to do some of that. So, let's see here. Hmm. I think mine would have a nice little fit right in through here. So I always tell beginners to plan a little bit here. The painting of the letters always gets bigger than you think it's going to be. And sometimes you can actually run out of room. All right, so I'm gonna take the pencil and I'm just gonna do a quick little sketch here of They love just like that. Now there's a couple of different things you could do. You could actually wait and just do this with a Sharpie. Make sure your paint's all dry behind it. That way you don't kill your Sharpie. Just FYI, Sharpie touching wet paint is instant death for a Sharpie. You just throw it in the trash. It won't work anymore. Uh, so you want to be careful with that. You can use that on dry paint um, or you can paint it on. But again, I recommend writing it on first. Just gives you a lot more confidence to proceed and then you can come back in. I use my little bit brush here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use some black. Remember you can do the little trick where you twist the head of the paint brush into the paint. That loads it up, but it also twists it into a nice fine point. All right, and then you can just follow your letters here that you've already got. And if it does dry brush a little bit, like mine just did, I actually love the look of that. It's actually kind of a popular look now so just roll with it you can just let it be what it is and i just kind of lift off with a light hand and your signature is always beautiful and appreciated no matter what, how you feel about your own handwriting i always tell people people who are near to you and love you really want to see your own hand even if it's rugged, they, they want to see that. They want to see your personality emerging in your painting. Uh, so that's, oh, you know, never be shy with that. Do your own lettering. It's beautiful. All right, and then I'm going to finish up with my signature. And I want to make sure I do have a teeny tiny little brush for this. Let's see, or you can use a Sharpie. Oh, my little power mode. I better have to hurry. So we'll finish up with the signature. I wanna make sure I don't run out of time on this because we're about to run out of batteries. Um, but I'll sign up and get all the details below. But thank you so much for joining me today and painting this beautiful horse. I think we did a fantastic job. So thank you again for joining me. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Um, every Monday we'll be painting together. Thank you so much. See you next time.